That's wonderful. Um, welcome to Moving On TV, guys. Today we're doing a big experiment. Um, I'm actually trying to interview someone on Skype and put the program on for you. And I've got a really incredible um, guest on today. Um, it's a young man called Trey Olds. <laughs> young man called Trey Olds. He was actually very young. He's 16 years, years old. Um, he's in Mississippi. You know where Old Man River comes from there, doesn't it? <laughs> the uh, yeah. Old Man River. <laughs> Do you live anywhere near um, near the um, the river, <laughs> or where do you live um, in Mississippi? <laughs> I live in Loosedale, Mississippi. It's like an hour um, from Gulfport, Mississippi, where which is close to the Mississippi River. Right. Okay. Wow. So that's quite close, isn't it? And how's the weather there at the moment? Do you have good weather, or is the weather as bad as ours? Well, actually, today is sunny for a change, but. Um, How's the weather with you today? We have weather like we do in England, but one day we had four seasons in the same day. You had, we had autumn, winter, summer, and um, what did I leave out? <laughs> autumn, winter, summer, and spring, all in the same day. And it jumped from hailstones to really strong sunshine, and I've never seen anything like it. Do you ever get weather like that? No, it's sunny, but it's going to, we're going to have a little, you know, rainstorm or whatever. It's been raining for the past couple of days. So. Okay. okay. Crazy English weather. Anyway, I'm really happy to be here today on Moving On TV with an extraordinary young man whose name is Trey Olds. And Trey runs his own radio station, which is the Trey Olds radio station. That's what you call it, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Trey Old Radio Ship. Yep. Um, the most, the most the, what's even more extraordinary about Trey is that he was diagnosed with autism um, in uh, 2012. Is that right? Um, well, it was in December after Christmas 2012. Well, before that, um, I was always um, kind of different from other people. Uh, if you could say, uh, but um, I can't really explain it, but and my mom and dad always um, figured out I was different than other kids. They couldn't like, explain it. They thought I was just a... Explain it, but and my mom and dad always um, figured out I was different than other kids. They couldn't... <laughs> So, um, you were saying that you got diagnosed in 2012, but you actually got meningitis when you were very, very young. That's true, isn't it? Yes, that is true. And I was born a premature baby. I was born a, a couple weeks early as well. Okay, but in 2012, you actually were diagnosed properly with um, autism? because your behavior yes. started to change, yes? And so your family yes. so your family got you diagnosed properly. Now, how did that change your life as a young man suddenly to mm -hmm. find out that you are actually autistic? Did it affect you in a big way? How did it affect you, Trevor? What did you say? Well, I didn't really know what it was at the time, you know. I didn't know. Then they explained to me what the behaviors of autism was. And then we go from there, you know, I they gave me medication and treatment and it didn't really have a negative effect on my life, but it had, um, it, you could say it changed my life because if I didn't have it, I wasn't who I was today, but. Okay. So you say that autism changed your life in a big way because it made you what you are today. Yes. So um, I mean, you you are extraordinary in what de in what you're doing because you're not letting uh, the condition rule your life in any way. You've gone out there 
and you've been broadcasting your own radio show. I mean, it's just so exciting. So, how did that happen? How did you get into media and wanting yeah. to actually do this? Yeah. Well, I, that's a good question, but, um, I'm, um, well, I started in 2014, um, uh, well, really late December 2013, but 2013-2014, but I had friends that um, made their own little programs, podcasts, and little radio stations, and ever since I was a little kid, I was always interested in radio and entertainment and stuff, and I always liked it. And one of my friends said, hey, Trey, you know, you should try this, find a website, and you could do your own show. You would be great at it. And at first I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know, you know. And um, I tried it, and the first show I did, it got um, 30 viewers in one day. And I went back, wow. you know, for one day. 30 people listening in in one and day. Now that is very good, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. You, sorry, go on, carry on. No, um, well, I was going to say, I, I didn't think it would last long, but, you know, it escalated and escalated, so. So basically, you started to do this, and um, mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that you have autism, so what, what are your symptoms? What would you say your symptoms are for the type of autism that you've got? Well, I was diagnosed with high-functioning autism, or um, Asperger's. There's different types of names for high-functioning autism. And my symptoms were anxiety, and, um, you know, I would just be nervous all the time. And um, I would repeat certain words, and, you know, I would keep on repeating sentences over and over. And um, really, um, behavior-wise, um, it's gotten better, but I take medicine for it, and, uh, you know, it's gotten way better than it was, you know? Of course, yes. Fine. So, of course, yes. Fine. So, do you find that running your radio station really helps you to deal with the symptoms? and helps you to have a better life because you're being very creative? Yes, um, I'm very creative. It helps my radio show and all my creativity projects. They help me stay grounded, you know. They help me stay in one place. I mean, I'm not all over. I mean, it keeps me busy, but I'm not busy all over the place. Mm -hmm. But And I... I've been on other radio stations talking about autism and meningitis and all that. So I'm out there and doing a lot of stuff. Amazing. Hi guys! Welcome to Moving On TV. And we're doing a raffle and I'm calling on you all to buy tickets. Buy tickets for the new Moving On TV Community Interest Company raffle in conjunction with WMAP, World Most Amazing People, we're being entered into a book. And so the money from the raffle will go to fund this. So you can get free life coaching with amazing NLP coaches, hypnotherapy session, reflexology, chocolates, um, toys, and music, and a free advert for your business or your book on Moving On TV with your own music in the background that will be written for you or your own promotion and interviews with me on TV. All if you buy tickets for this amazing raffle, you can win loads of prizes. So get in there. Contact Lauren at movingontv.uk or you can PM me and Lauren Hope on Facebook or you can get me on at Moving On TV Twitter. Looking forward to hearing from you. Get lots of tickets and let's talk about 
getting rid of the stigma of borderline personality disorder on the amazing WMAP with Casey Armstrong and also on Moving On TV and in the book Simply Amazing which will be a New York best-selling book we hope with your help okay looking forward to seeing all the amazing ticket selling welcome to moving on tv the new tv channel for us the positive inspirational tv channel my name is lauren hope i am the founder and ceo of moving on tv no one is ordinary we're all special, unique, wonderful human beings. We're all celebrities with our own talents and strengths and dreams. Moving on TV is here for all of us. We have a book show if you wrote a book. We're looking for talent, for moving on talent. We want to stream you. We don't want you to compete. Artists shouldn't have to compete. It's disrespectful. And we're going to produce a new musical and you could be in it. And we're going to serialize it for everyone. We're not going to have the news. We're going to have the happy news. Positive, inspirational, happy stories, which are actually the majority of the stories in the world that are happening all around us, except no one wants to give them to you. And of course, because we're run by solution-based people, life coaches, we want to give you the truth and to help you move on. So we want to know why these tragedies are happening all around us. Why are so many people being hit off their bicycles? What is the solution to all these problems in our world? How can we have a better world, a more peaceful world? We're looking for you. We're looking for all of you. Everyone has a unique story. We're looking for hosts, presenters, all age groups, particularly older people that are not being given any opportunities, come and work on our media. Cameramen, editor, editors, anyone who wants to work with us, and of course, sponsors, organic makeup and organic products that are helping the environment and the human race. Come on board Moving On TV, the new positive channel, the channel that gives you hope. You can contact me at Lauren with an E at movingontv.uk. Don't get depressed. Come on board Moving On TV. See you soon. Bye. Hello, my name is Martin Oswald of Martin Oswald Hypnotherapy. I specialize in smoking cessation, weight loss, phobia release, stress management, and hypnobirthing. I can do a free assessment via the phone, via Skype, or face-to-face -face at any time. So that's Martin Oswald of Martin Oswald Hypnotherapy. Looking forward to your call now. You can also find me on my Facebook page, which is Martin Oswald Hypnotherapy. Welcome to Welcome the Trey, to the Old Trey Olds, Olds Radio Show, show me, starring me, our, our announcer Bob Thibodeau, and our host, and our host Trey Olds. Trey Olds. Enjoy, the show. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to Moving On TV and our new program where I interview incredible people from all over the world. I'm so excited because this is the first interview I'm doing properly on Skype and I'm hoping I'm going to be edited so that you can actually watch it and that everything will flow nicely, well we're doing our best. Today I've got Trey Olds uh, from the Trey Olds radio station in Mississippi and um, we've been, I've been interviewing him about his career uh, at the young age of 16 and also, or oh, sorry, the mature age of 16 because I feel like I'm talking to a very old wise soul um, and because he's also was diagnosed with a serious autism condition in 2012 he's actually taken that and taken all the traits and what we call weaknesses he's turned them into strengths that's yes, right that's isn't it true that's very true yes yes which is extraordinary isn't it absolutely extraordinary so no one has got an excuse to just sit there now and say i've got a dream but i've got a clue what to do about it when you watch this interview you're going to be so inspired 
hopefully, and you're going to start thinking about what am I going to do with my... So basically, um, Trey is going out there to tell other people that it doesn't matter what condition you've got. You know, we work very similar to um, WMAP and Casey Armstrong. We work, you know, I don't want to take his thunder away from him, but we do put on people that are extraordinary and unique and are going out there to change their world and lots of other people's worlds. They're not letting anything hold them back. That's right, isn't it? Yes, that's Yes, that's true. Everybody has a voice, you know. Everybody has their own thing they can do, you know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you have autism, anything. You you have a purpose, you know. That's fantastic. And I try to go out there. And... So, um, you're still at school. So, you've still got your studies yes. and everything. <laughs> um, so, how do you run this around? I mean, how do your parents... Uh, deal with it do they support you in spite of the fact that you're at school and you still got your exams and everything how do you run the radio station around your life well um, my parent my parents are fully supportive they help me in any way they can and um, school wise and radio show business um, I do my radio show when I get off of school which is around two o'clock so I do the radio show business at 2 o'clock until 6 o'clock or whatever. And on the weekends, I mostly do it every day and all the time until 7 o'clock. So it's, you know, now in the summer, I could do it more because, you know, school is out. So I've been busy with that. Of course, of course. I'm really impressed with the way you work. I'm really impressed how communicative you are and how easy it is to talk to you, Trey because I was a little bit nervous of that. You know, um, again, we have the stigma of autism the same way as we have the stigma of mental illness. People don't know. And so, you know, when you don't know um, how a person's going to react, you, you get confused and maybe a bit scared. But I've been having conversations and Skyping with, with Trey and you are very easy to talk to, very communicative, very friendly. And I feel that you connect very well to people, which is interesting because Thank to you. me, yeah, because my experience of autism is, um, of course, Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man, you know, that type of autism. Yeah. Or when I've worked in social services and I've worked with people that have not been able to relate to me in any way, shape or form, they've seen a pair of glasses and they've related to my glasses, so to speak. So what you're doing, I think, is extraordinary. Um, so um, how do you go out there to present yourself to lo lots of people out there that are going through similar things, like are being diagnosed, or their children are being diagnosed? Do you go out there? Do you campaign? Do you go to schools? Um, do you meet the public um, to talk to them about your case or the way your life is? Well, um, I meet a lot of people with autism at my school and different schools I went to and I can relate to them and, um, you know, I explain to them that, you know, you're not alone, there's more people with them and I've, as I said, I've been on other radio programs and all that and I've talked and I've received emails from people saying, you know, what I'm doing is wonderful and they've just been complimenting me and all that, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, as, well, basically, that's our job, isn't it? When we are diagnosed with something, because I have a condition called borderline personality disorder and I'm very well with it, thank God. But our creativity mm. is so important because when you're in that space of creativity, then you can do anything, as you are proving. So, um, how did you teach yourself how to run a radio station? Um, did you go on YouTube? Did you have a mentor? How, how did you do that? Well, um, I've been on YouTube kind of searching stuff and I had friends and I have a mentor. He's been doing radio um, for 30 something years. He lives in Louisiana, which where I'm from. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
I've interviewed him on my show, and he wants me to be on his show in a couple of weeks. So me and him have been contacting back and forth. So Sounds very good. And you were on Jacob Pyle's show. You used to do some of the shows for him on Spreaker. Is that right? Um, yes, and YouTube. He does his show on YouTube, and um, he con well, he found me on radioguestlist.com, yes. which is the <laughs> site where you could front from. Mm -hmm. I think you're familiar with that site. I but, am. Um, That's how you know. So we did a lot, and I know you were interviewed on WMAP. I actually missed your interview. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Uh, very, very much because um, Casey Armstrong is a wonderful, wonderful um, interviewer. Oh, but you interviewed by Kelly, is that right? No, I was interviewed by Casey. Oh, brilliant! Because he's a wonderful interviewer. Um, I love the, the the way he interviews people. He's very focused and knows exactly what questions to ask. Okay, so was there anything that Casey asked you that you really had to think about? As I said, I'm not stealing his questions, but <laughs> I'm sure you won't mind. But is there anything that he asked you that really made you dig deep um, and you really had to think about it? What was the, the question? Um, <laughs> yes, there was one question. It was, I forgot how he worded the question, but it was something, what is the most difficult part and what is the most... Um, aggravating part for me with my radio show. Oh, okay, because you both run a radio show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what did you say? <laughs> I, I had to think hard about it, but I said, um, some people, I'm not saying you or anybody, just uh, time zones, you know, different time zones. Yes. I get so confused with time zones, you know. Mm-hmm be a bit of a yeah. problem when you're interviewing people from all over the world. <laughs> um, what's the time there at the moment? Because it's just gone six o'clock here in the UK. What's the time with you? <laughs> it is uh, 12.35 um, noon. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad on a Saturday. And um, <laughs> so you're in your studio at the moment. Are you actually yes. going to be doing a show? I do have a show at 3 o'clock um, today, okay. and I'm going to be interviewing an actor at 3 o'clock, so I'm looking I'm forward to that. Can we ask who that is, or we're not allowed to ask? Is it confidential? <laughs> uh, um, you can ask. Um, his name is Philip Galinsky. He is an okay. actor in New, in New York. He does a show in Manhattan, New York called the Manhattan Monologue Slam Show. It's like a comedy sketch show. Oh, fabulous. Fabulous. So you must get to interview lots of exciting people from all walks of life. What would you say was the most difficult interview you've ever done? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there was... um. One, and I'm not going to say his name just for... No, um, that's fine. No, we keep it confidential, <laughs> but we won't mention names. <laughs> what happened? But, um, <laughs> he, he was a voice actor in, in Rochester, New York. And um, um, it was difficult for me because he wouldn't really answer by questions, like the simple questions. Like, you know, how did you get started in voice acting and he did a little radio as well. And he kind of went around, you know, not answering, the, just bringing on little um, different conversations about it. Mm -hmm. And I find it most difficult because they're not really answering the question. Yeah. But... So you kept trying to get him to answer this question, but he, he kept evading it, did he? Yes, and um, he finally answered some of the questions, but he he didn't really feel like talking. It was simple questions. It wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. kind of... 
So, um, and, uh, it sounds really interesting yeah. <laughs> and a bit embarrassing, obviously, because you do you go live on there with Spreaker or is it simili similar to what I do where you edit it and you can cut it out? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's live air. So. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I have an advantage with moving on TV because we film everything. I edit after edit everything, so I get a chance to cut things out. You know, if I was streaming, going, you know, live, that would be different. But I'm not doing that yet. But I do find that is an advantage, definitely. Yeah. You know, because especially if I could dry up and I can't think of what to ask next. But no, um, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't usually happen because one thing leads to, to another. So, um, going back to you basically getting out there, starting your own broadcasting, your own radio station, learning everything on YouTube, practicing it, and setting up your account on Spreaker, it's Spreaker, is it? Or Spreaker? Um, Spreaker, yes. Sorry, um, Spreaker. S-P, yeah. Okay, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, -E -E is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, basically doing it that way. Now, you said that you really, really wanted, to, you loved acting yourself and you really enjoy oh, yeah. doing um, like comedy and stuff like that to make people mm -hmm. happy. Um, do you do your own show that way? Uh, you know, in the way, do you do, you do um, like sketches that you make up or do you write stuff? Um, yes, I do some, well, you can't see me because it's a radio show, but, um, mm -hmm. I have wrote sketches like, um, comedy sketches or poems and all that and make people laugh and I've gotten an email saying, you know, keep it up and all that. That's brilliant. Brilliant. And how do you survive? I mean, were you donated all the equipment? Did someone donate it to you? Or how did you manage to buy it? Did you get some kind of sponsorship or, you know, money? Because money obviously is, is a big thing. Um, but did you have to yeah. buy everything or was was it donated or sponsored in some way? No, all my equipment I've bought and, um, well, my family bought some of it, you know, like holidays or whatever, but mm -hmm. most of my equipment I've bought with money from holidays or, you know, and all that. So I bought all my equipment. Fabulous. And is there anyone in your family? Do they have they been on your shows at all? Has anyone from your family got interesting talents, or have you interviewed any of them at all? I've asked them if they could be on my show, and they always said no. They can't do that. They be a nervous wreck on there. <laughs> so you've got all the confidence in the world, and you see, I think that having autism is actually, you're taking the, one of the traits here, which is risk taking, but you're using it in a really positive way, in a confident way. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. And I think that's the answer. I think the answer is that if you're diagnosed with anything, whether it's a mental illness or anything really, you know, any label, so to speak, you take that label, you take the traits that um, you're diagnosed because of them, but you can use them in a very creative manner, the same way as I've created Moving On TV and Moving On Theatre, Trey has gone off there and created his own radio station, <laughs> which is so exciting. So what, what are your dreams? What haven't you done yet at 16 years of age? Um, what would you like to do that you haven't well, I would like to be, as you said, acting. I've started to get into like theater productions in local towns where I am. And when I'm older, I hope to be in movies and all that. I was always interested in radio and television and I always wanted to do that. So. Right, okay. So you've got pl big plans basically to get out there and do more acting and stuff like that. And yes. So how many more years have you got at college or school before uh, you've got another I, two years, is that right? 
Um, I'm in tenth grade, so I'll have um, two more years. Yes, yeah. two or three. Yeah. So, are you doing media studies at school, or just the boring old stuff, or the usual stuff that we do at school? No, I'm doing drama and literature, and uh, literature because I. I'm a writer. I started to write little poems and all that, and I'm trying to publish them with another person and all that. Wow. And, um... Do you remember yeah. your poems off by heart? Because I, I know that that's one of the occupational problems of writers. I never remember my songs. Um, I record them, so I remember them. It's true. But do you remember any of your poems that you can, maybe you could give us a little bit of one of your poems now? Um, sadly, I can't remember. No? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, as I say, that seems to be a, an occupational hazard of writers where we don't actually remember our materials. So we record it so that we can go back to it, luckily, and then, you know, we can actually do what we need to do. So, as you were saying, you, you want to go out there, you want to be an actor, so if you go out there and start acting, what's going to happen to Trey Old's radio station? Are you going to get other people in to work with you, to run it? Um, well, um, that's a difficult question. So when I go, I do when I go to, um, to do radio and acting, I'm probably going to quit my show and go to work at a radio station and be a DJ there. So. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're going to move up and use all of this as a really good experience to get your foot yes. in the door, basically. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So, um, so what else mm -hmm. would you like to say to our viewers, because obviously this is going to go out and moving on TV, people are going to be watching you, people are going to be amazed, and a lot of people are sitting there thinking, oh, I want to do something, but I, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and you know, we're all about solutions, so what would you suggest to anyone who's just sitting there thinking, I'd like to do something like that. I'd love to um, do something like run my own radio show. What would be the first step, do you think, that they could take towards making this happen? Well, um, think positive, you know, don't give up hope. There's hope out there for everyone. Autism or anything, if, you know, everybody has a purpose in life radio, television, or painting, or anything you would, what your dream is, you just go out there and take it easy, easy steps, you know, don't force it, but just, wow. it's out there, you yeah. know. Yeah. That's amazing. You are so mature for your age. It's like I'm talking to an old soul here. Now, some of us, it takes a whole life to get to the levels that you're getting. And it's re I'm really, really proud and humbled to have you on here to be interviewing you. And um, do you have any plans to come to England at all? So we can meet you? Um, probably when I'm older, probably in my 20s, I would probably, because I love to travel, I, so I would probably come to London, England, or wherever, England, you know. Excellent. Thanks so much, Trey. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, to wrap up, we're just going to say thank you very, very much to Trey Olds from the beautiful Mississippi and Old Man River. And I'm so sorry here because I'm so ignorant. What is the name of the river again? The Mississippi River. Mrs. Mrs. Yes, Mrs. The Mississippi River. river I know. <laughs> um, just very quickly, you know, I, I actually did go to America years and years ago and I went to my um, Memphis and um, I think I went to um, Louisiana, I can't remember exactly but I do remember the jazz bands on the river, this beautiful river boat and you had these jazz bands, do you get them near you? Yeah. Yeah, really, really wonderful. Um. Mm. 
don't see them, but when I lived in Louisiana, it was everywhere because, you know, New Orleans, jazz bands are very popular, okay. and um, they go around and everything. I love jazz, so. Oh, brilliant. Yes, yeah. yeah, so do I. So, um, just, just one more question. The type of music um, that you play on your radio show, is it particularly for very young audiences or do you also play jazz and classical and a mixture of stuff for others? Well, um, I play um, because my show is a family-based show, you know, no curse words or anything, Good. no inappropriate like stuff. <laughs> so I play all kinds of um, music, country, rock. I don't really play rap music. I'm not a fan of it, so I don't no. really play it. No, I find yes, I understand that. So basically, it's an all-rounder show where you'll play lots of types of music, and and, and your audiences. Would you say that uh, people of all ages listen into your show? Yes, I generally it's mostly teenagers and older people that I find listen to it. So. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the end, th the end product of what we've done today and I hope you are. And I just wanted to say thank you very much and how incredibly exciting it's been to interview you. You are really um, amazing. Again, I don't want to take thank you. Uh, Casey's world most amazing people away from him. But, you know, a lot of people would just be sitting there and whinging or whatever, you know, having, he calls it a pity party, but you don't. You get out there and you do a lot for others and you have a lot of fun doing it. And that, I think, is the answer. That is the answer to, in life, basically. So um, I look forward to um, listening more and more to your station and passing this on. Thank you. So um, you've got to have a wonderful, beautiful, sunny day. <laughs> And you take care. That's lovely. Thank you so yeah. much, Trey. If there's anything you else you'd like to say, then it yeah. was a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you. You do a great job. I applaud you for that. You do wonderful too. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. And hopefully, I hope to meet you someday. Okay, it'd be really lovely to meet you someday. If you come to England, look me up. Lots of love. Take care. Go, okay. guys. That was the first episode of Incredible People That Make The World Go Round. <laughs> Something like that. I'm not sure what I'll call it yet. But you were listening and watching Trey Olds, a young 16-year-old guy who started his own radio station with autism. And did he let that get him down? No way, Jose. So, what's your excuse, eh? I'm looking forward to interviewing loads of people now from all over the world because I've set up Skype. It's going to be great. So hopefully I can edit this and make it really good for you. Thank you so much for watching. You know where I am. If you want to be interviewed, you are all unique. I love you all. Bringing the hope back into our lives, Moving On TV. You can contact me at movingontv.uk. Ring me on 07437. 532798 and we'll get you on here wherever you are in the world now take care and have a beautiful day namaste thank you